Today on What It's Like, discussion episode Friday, all of the major manufacturers that built pickup trucks starting in the 1930s, and we're only going to talk about American or USA manufacturers. I've done extensive research on this list. If I miss any, please, in the comment section below, fill in the blanks. So I wanted to start with some honorable mentions. We're going to make this list mostly pickup trucks, but I also wanted to include a couple brands that offered trucks, like built big commercial trucks that you wouldn't think built trucks. Autocar, founded in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 1897. They are still in business today, but they build big commercial vehicles. But back in the 30s, you could get a truck by this company. And a lot of people think that Autocar just made cars because it was part of the name. They are more of a truck company, which is crazy. They should have picked a better name, like maybe Auto Truck. Anyway, moving on, Pierce Arrow, which is one of the three Ps. The other two are Peerless and Packard. Pierce Arrow was in business from 1865 to 1938, and they were best known as a luxury car brand, but they also made trucks, buses, boats, trailers, motorcycles, and bicycles. Interesting thing that I never knew about Pierce Arrow, Studebaker bought them in 1928, and I'm not sure if they owned them until the end. Could you fill that blank in in the comment section below? Because I couldn't find a definitive answer information if they just owned them for that one year or if they owned them for the rest of their existence. The other thing that I also found out about Pierce Arrow was they did not bend a knee, so to speak, to make a budget brand. They made luxury cars like Packard. Packard made the 115 and the 120. Pierce Arrow didn't go down that road and consequently went out of business in 1938, whereas Packard lasted until 1959, with 58 being the last model year. Moving on, Nash. Nash never made a pickup truck. I think they intended to, but it never came to fruition. They did make a tow truck for their service stations, and I know where there is one. Would you guys like to see an episode on that? In the comment section below. Those were just honorable mentions onto the pickup trucks. And just to reiterate, we're starting in 1930 because before 1930, everybody and their mom made some sort of truck of some sort. And there was all kinds of brands that went out of business around the 30s because of the Great Depression. So it would be really hard to compile a list. These are in alphabetical order. And if I miss any, please fill me in in the comment section below. We might make a part two to this series. All right, AMC, this is a bit of a stretch, but AMC bought Kaiser Jeep in 1970 and built the Wagoneer and the Gladiator, which was better known as the J4000 from 1971 to 1988. Cadillac, believe it or not, Cadillac tried making trucks in the 1970s. It was part pickup truck, part wagon, and it's super rare because only 204 units were ever made. Cadillac did go on to make the Escalade, EXT from 2002 to 2013. Chevy. Chevy's truck heritage started all the way back in 1918, and they're still making trucks to this day. Crosley, the small pickup truck, perfect for going to town to getting paint or beer because that's all you could really fit in the back of that truck, but they're cute, aren't they? Crosley built vehicles from 1939 and had to take a little bit of a break because of World War II, and then they stopped making vehicles in 1952. I said in other videos that they went bankrupt. Crosley never went bankrupt. He just stopped making cars. Diamond T, founded in 1905 by Charles Arthur Tilt, more commonly referred to as C.A. Tilt. Diamond T was more or less a commercial truck company, but they did offer pickup trucks from 1940 to 1950 in one-ton configurations. The Diamond T pickup truck was built to compete with another entry on this list, which we'll get to later on. Dodge. Dodge started building trucks back in 1918, and they're still at it today. Federal, founded 1910 as the Bailey Motor Truck Company by Martin L. Pludger, who later founded Oakland Motor Company in 1926. This was Diamond T's main competitor. Federal built pickup trucks from 1938 to 1950. Ford. First Ford truck built in 1917, and they are still going strong, with the F-150 being the best-selling truck in 46 years. The tradition started back in 1977. GMC started building trucks back in 1902, and they are still going at it to this very day. 
Hudson. So many people may not know, but Hudson offered trucks from 1926 to 1947. Depending on the year, Hudson also offered different makes underneath the Hudson brand like Essex, Dover, Terraplane. After 1938, Hudson was the only name that appeared on trucks. International Harvesters starting making trucks in 1907. International pickup truck production lasted from 1907 all the way up to 1975. Lincoln made trucks to compete with the Cadillac Escalade. Their version was the Mark LT, and it was produced from 2005 to 2014. Lincoln also produced a very short-lived truck called the Blackwood in 2001 and 2002. Mack, mostly known for building the big commercial trucks, but Mack built pickup trucks from 1938 to 1944. This was Diamond T's major competitor, but these are rare. They only made 2,686 between those years. The model is called the ED, and it had a rating of three quarters of a ton. I know we were going to keep this mostly American brands, but we have to include this one, Mercury. They produced trucks from 1947 to 1968, and most were sold to the Canadian market, but you do see them around here. So they're more or less a rebadged Ford in appearance, but they did offer different engines. Plymouth. Yes, you heard that right. Plymouth offered pickup trucks from 1935 to 1942, and it's a bit of a head scratcher because Chrysler was making Fargo trucks. For those that don't know, Chrysler bought Fargo, and they were selling Fargo trucks. In 1928, the company was known for building trucks, and they were basically, when Chrysler bought them, they were a rebadged Dodge truck that they sold in Canada and other markets, but they took a well-known name of a truck off of the market and switched it with a Plymouth and put that in its place. And when the Plymouths didn't sell nearly as well as the Fargos were selling, they went back to selling Fargos. It just, it didn't make sense, but that's what they did. REO built the Speedwagon, not to get confused with the band by the same exact name, often referred to as the first conventional pickup truck built from 1915 and produced all the way out to sometime around 1953, sources vary. Studebaker, one might not think Studebaker is associated with pickup trucks, but they built pickup trucks from 1929 to 1963. They made some of the most gorgeous pickup truck designs as well as one of the most hideous trucks to ever drive on this earth. The most gorgeous pickup truck they ever made was the 1937 Studebaker Express. In my opinion, an absolute showstopper of a truck. When you see one in person, you will never forget it. The lines are beautiful. They also made the most hideous thing that ever drove on the planet, in my opinion, the M15 series or the simply the M series. Willis built trucks from 1947 to 1965. The Jeep truck would evolve into the Jeep Gladiator around 1962 and later the J10, J20 under AMC. Well, that's our list. Pickup truck cars like the El Camino, the Ranchero, Plymouth made a car called the Plymouth Scamp. Those will get its own episode one day. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, steak or chicken, power steering or manual steering. Two scenarios today, and money is no object. First scenario, would you rather have a 1942 Mac ED series or a 1947 Diamond T201 or 1939 Federal 15M? I'm going to leave that up for a minute. If it's not enough time, feel free to pause the video. Second scenario, these are all Studebakers. 1937 Studebaker Express or a 1938 Studebaker Express or a 1939 Studebaker Express. Put what you would rather have in the comment section below. Moving on to name that tune. First person to get both the correct name of the band and song title. First person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. That was from a live event. No auto-tune, just a guy with his band and a microphone. I miss 
genuine things like that. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you would like to get in touch with me, like talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, the easiest way is to find me on Facebook and shoot me a message. If you don't have Facebook and would like to contact me, shoot me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description. Just know I appreciate all the support. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. 1948 Chevy Fleetmaster Woody Station Wagon. That's what's coming up next on What It's Like. Tune in tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time to catch that episode. And until then, toodaloo! Hey, hey, hey!